I don't mean to be a uh, Mr. Black Pill. That's not usually my lane. I'm a red pill guy. But listen, it seems like the lunacy is, you know, switching gears into six gears and it's just going off. It's going off the rails. And we, and we got to talk about some of this insanity. Yeah. Especially, you know, the impact it's having on our military readiness. Oh, my God. Speaking mm -hmm. of which, we uh, briefly covered this uh, the last time Rhino and I were here on the show. But, uh, well, let's get uh, well balls deep back into this one, shall we? <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, before we go into this, I want to talk about this, about uh, exempt from deployments PT standards. All right. Now, when I got wounded and sent back to Langstuhl, they literally said, you have one year. If uh, you can return to duty after one year, you're going to be fine. If not, you're non-deployable and we can't keep you in the Army. So it, it behooved me to, you know, jump through the hoops and do what needed to be done so I could stay in the service. Because let, let's face it, if you're a service member, your number one job is a warfighter. Period. I, I don't care if you, you know, one of those guys uh, who tends a fuel blivet or drives uh, a truck or what have you. If all that shit goes south, you got a rifle, you were trained how to use it, fall in, make it happen. All right. Now, there's a lot of guys in the service, and I saw this while I was. Uh, last three years I was in, I watched K-Pac promote many women over male soldiers, you know, to the rank of E5, E6, E7. And some of these guys that got passed over, you know, two or three deployments, airborne, air assault, experts with their weapons, they scored like, you know, I think the lowest guy I put forward E5 for E5, you know, was a PT score of like 235. Normally, I would insist that they got like a 265 or higher if I'm going to put them forward for promotion. And these guys busted their asses to get ready for promotion. And they were literally, you know, passed over. And the promotions were given to these female soldiers with less time in service less time in grade, no deployments, uh, somebody who was barely passing PT and height and weight. You know, uh, mysteriously, some of these women passed height and weight and PT like four or five days before, you know, the promotion board. And I'm telling you, it just killed morale. I literally lost good guys. Just like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to the Fort living room. Fuck this place. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't, talk them out of it. I couldn't even blame them. All right. Now just imagine that happening on active duty and you're watching these people with mental delusions who are now undeployable because they have a wound that won't heal. And, uh, you know, all of these hard chargers who want to, you know, who are performing, want to do a good job and literally watch these, these nincompoops get promoted above them. All right. Now I'm telling you, if you thought missing the recruiting numbers last year was bad, the rumor on the street is it's two times worse. And we're almost through fiscal year 2023 for the military. It ends, I believe, October 1st or October 31st, the end of the fiscal year. That's three and a half, four months away. So if they're missing their recruiting goals by half, they I mean, I'm sure there's going to be more suicides and problems at the recruiting stations because they're cracking the whip on these people trying to get the numbers. It's just not yep. going to happen. Yep, and they keep implementing stuff like this, and those numbers are just going to keep on falling. I, I can't. I cannot. Listen, if this this is a blatant attempt to, to, to destroy our military, and, and they're doing a great job. Yeah, it's working. Yep. 
Yeah. According to the uh, article here, it says, as lawmakers fought to keep transgender reassignment surgery from being funded by the Pentagon, questions were being asked about why this even matters. First of all, it fucking shouldn't. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that the Pentagon doesn't fund fertility treatment to help you grow your family, but they're sure gung-ho about funding abortions and transgender surgeries. Mm -hmm. Can you sense a pattern here? Yeah. yeah. It's fucked but, up. Uh, but beyond that, a reporter asked an important question. Can you elaborate a little bit on how transgender reassignment surgery might influence battle readiness? What followed was three minute three minutes touching on numerous issues that deserve more like three hours of explanation. Oh man, I don't even know if we want to listen to the clip, but shall we? Yeah, I'll put it on. Yeah, sure. Right. Can you elaborate a little bit on how transgender reassignment surgery might impede battlefield readiness? I will tell you this, there, as an as a, as a individual who started out as a private and, and served for over three decades, uh, there are many people that want to serve in many capacities who are unable to. If you're allergic to bee stings, if you have type 1 diabetes, though you might want to serve, you cannot. If you want to, if you want to fly an F-16 but can't correct your vision appropriately, you cannot fly an F-16 or anything else. And so mm -hmm. there are many people that want to serve. What this is about, what the military is about, is what the, the needs of the nation are from a national security standpoint. When they marry up with your desires, that's an awesome and great circumstance. But when they don't, the needs of the nation come first. And that's what the viewpoint of these individuals uh, enshrined in, in, in the amendments that passed and the amendments All that right, were offered in the argument. All right. He is just throwing out a bunch of word salad. Okay. Um. When I was in the military, I would see officers do this all the time, and we'd call it the soft shoe. They throw it on the sand, and they, you know, try to talk their way around the, the, the difficult questions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, listen, I, I saw three wars come and go, and I was almost killed in two. Uh, you know, first place is, you know, you win. Second place is a hospital bed. Third place is the grave. Yeah. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. Reality war they don't care about your feelings they don't care if you have synthetic breasticles you know you're, you're still going to get zeroed out and and you're driving a lot of the good people out of the service guys with you know 20 years of you know of war experience and it's walking out the door well the other thing uh too my mic seems extremely high tonight. Let me see if I can adjust that a little bit here. Um, there we go. We'll turn it down a little bit. There we go. All right. Uh, the other thing that I notice is a correlation between the community of confused holes and poles here uh, has a high correlation of mental illness as well. And yes. I don't know what the qualifications are, but I assume somebody with mental uh diagnosis diagnoses uh would be barred from service as well wouldn't they certain yeah certain mental they illnesses? i mean that's back in the day if uh you were taking any kind of head meds you couldn't you couldn't come into service and, unless you're off of them for i believe six months maybe a year yeah. and then you got uh you know the go-ahead from the doctor uh, right. They wouldn't take you if you had tattoos on your neck or tattoos that you could see on your hands, you know. And I'm, I think that might have been a little overzealous, but I understand now. The quality of the people out there in America to serve in the, in the military has gone down astronomically. <laughs> oh, excuse me. So, I mean, you got uh, kids graduating from high school with a teardrop Xbox body. Mm -hmm. They're getting people with uh, broken hips and femurs that are going through basic training. Wow. You got guys trying to do the obstacle course, pulling their own arms out of socket when they do the monkey bars. I, I, I never saw any of that when I went through. You know, mm -hmm. and... They're taking fat people now. You know, when I came in, they you'd ha they would take you if you were overweight by a certain amount, and they would send you to fat camp, yeah. which was nothing but a suffer session from hell until you made height and weight, and then you went to basic and AIT. 
So flat out, uh, what what you're saying is, and this is what I'm gathering, is that our military is now being filled by those unfit for duty who would not perform well at all in actual combat, and that's where we're at right, right now. That's it's that's 100. percent it, it is insane. Yep. You know, and, and mm. one of my fears is this: since you know I'm retired, E8. You know, if it gets really bad and like a nuke or two drops somewhere, I could quite possibly get a postcard in the mail telling me to report, you know, and then carry on, you know, doing stuff in this woke ass military. I, I'm going to be honest, I have a hard time doing that. I, I will not, I will not yeah. take orders from a transsexual. I just won't do it. Nope. I mean, in my opinion, they, they have a mental illness from from the word go mm -hmm. yep it's and called i believe the uh the uh individual that we covered in the last article uh that person i believe the backstory for them was they were thinking about self-deletion and then they started embracing this uh way of life and that renewed their vigor and now they're i can't remember what rank they are in the military but they're in there mm -hmm. like oh Hey. Yeah, and I listen. I talk to a lot of guys who are on active duty via you know the email system I have here, and a couple of these guys do have commanders who are these trans wackos, hmm. and quite literally, to get rid of them, you're going to have to file a an, a formal written IG complaint stating you do not have confidence in your chain of command. If 20% of a unit does that, they by regs, that commander is gone. It's just that simple. Yeah. You just got to, listen, man, you, you young men in the service, you're just going to have to sack up and take a stand, man, because this is insane. Yep. And one thing that uh, does kind of gripe me about this is this section right here. Transgender service members take funding allocated from the Exponent Exceptional Family Members Program, which helps military family members with long-term health issues like genetic disorders, autism, or various physical deformities, for example. And that's infuriating, but not really the battle readiness issue. Well, yeah, I mean, listen, the military does that all the time. They, they, they set up their budgets. And then, you know, hey, we're having a short fall here. We'll take money out of this pot. They do it all the time. Uh, it, I find that it very offensive that you're yeah. taking money away from the needs of, ex, you know, special special needs kids or what have you. And right. you're giving it to these idiots who can't even deploy. We're paying these people a wage. We're giving them free medical care. And we get nothing out of it. Yeah. Other than and, uh, maybe their virtue signaling. That doesn't win wars or battles. Yeah. And the rest of this article is telling as well. Uh, it's closed out here, but I can I can still read it here. Uh, no, you're fine. Uh, trans service members are non-deployable due to what is a, basically a self-imposed long-term health issue. The transition process is le lengthy during which you are non-deployable due to the unavailability of the gender transition-related medical and psychological services during deployments. The military can't send you someplace that does not offer psychological or medical services you require for an ongoing medical issue. So during the entire transition process, a service member cannot be sent on a deployment because that would be denying them access to their, person to their personnel file deems necessary medical care. In other words... Uh, they're getting a free ride uh, with military benefits without apt having to do a goddamn thing. Is what I'm seeing. Absolutely here. correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. that that's a, a morale killer right there. Yep. Yeah, it's going to drive more people out of the service. Yeah. And, uh, like quite frankly, we're about two years away from uh, the draft. Mm -hmm. If these recruiting numbers are as bad as uh, as I'm being told, yeah, they can't sustain this. The volunteer military is going to come to an end, and then you're going to see people really flip out when uh, you know they get out of high school. And guess what? You're going well, in the military. 
and the number of uh, people that are are not even qualified uh, based on uh, just their health alone. What is that? Something like forty percent of people in this country aren't even. I don't. Even... I don't know the exact uh, statistics, but uh, yeah, it's a very, very you know small number compared to what it used to be. Yeah. Watch Grunt Speak live every Tuesday and Thursday at eight p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonculus.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the Meat Gazer box.